What's up everybody, it's Ben from The Vinyl Jukebox and in today's video, I'm gonna show some of my recent vinyl finds from over the past few weeks. As always, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to leave a like and a comment below this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. So jumping right into it, I wanted to start off with one of my biggest finds from over the past few weeks. This is Ozzy Osbourne and Randy Rhodes Tribute. I found this at a local book and record store, Bruce Apple Books. I actually featured them in my Record Dividers DIY video. I'll put a link below in the comments uh, so you can see. Um, but this one was a big one for me. When I saw this, I got really excited. Um, very hard to find and especially because it is a gold stamp promo copy So this album came out right after Randy Rhodes tragically passed away And it's a live album. It's an awesome live album. I really hadn't spent too much time listening to it before this um, But I was really happy to add it to the collection in addition it uh, includes a track D, which was a Randy Rhodes studio outtake. It was actually featured on one of the most recent Blizzard of Oz uh, re-releases. I have that on CD, uh, but it was cool to have it on vinyl and a really cool find here, Ozzy Osbourne, Randy Rhodes tribute. So another recent find, and these are kind of out of order in terms of when I found them. I'm just kind of doing this all together. Um, but this is the Rolling Stones 12 by five. Now I already had a copy of this. Let me just take it out of the cover there, awesome. Now I already had a copy of this, but I did notice that this was a mono version. My version right now is the stereo version. The only problem with this copy is it has some writing on one side of the labels, uh, but um, the other label is fine. So I decided to keep it. This will at least hold me over until I can find a better copy, but it sounds phenomenal. And it was really cool to get a uh, mono version of that. Cause it, like I said, I have the stereo. And the thing is with my stereo copy, um, it is a radio station promo copy and the radio station decided to put their, uh, actually, let me pull it out right now real quick. Here we go. So yeah, on my copy, this radio station decided to put this big label there covering most of the album artwork. So another reason why I wanted to hold on to this one is because I get to have the whole, uh, have the whole album artwork. So, you know, that's another plus. All right, next up, and this one I picked up online. This was an Amazon purchase recently. Alice in Chains uh, re-released their Jar of Flies EP. So I wanted to pick that up, remastered. And this vinyl sounds phenomenal. Sounds phenomenal. This is just the regular standard black edition. Um, I know that the website had some really cool exclusives, including one that was very limited that actually had dead flies embedded in the vinyl. Um, would have been cool to pick that one up, although it's kind of gross, but it would have been cool to pick that one up, but I heard it sold out within minutes of being up on the website. So. Missed out on that, but really happy to have a remastered copy. I'm trying to pick up all these Alice in Chains reissues because they all sound really good. And these are really hard albums to find uh, original copies of. All right, next up, and these are a couple albums that I actually found at Goodwill now. As you probably know, if you are a record collector and dig in all sorts of different stores, Goodwill, it's very difficult and it's very few and far between, especially these days, that you find good albums there usually you're finding <laughs> show tunes and beat up classical and just basically all the records that record stores didn't want um but i did get lucky and i did find a find a couple of really cool albums this is jefferson airplanes uh bless its pointed little head i think i got that right yep this is them live at the Fillmore east and west and this is a really cool live album no it doesn't have the poster with it but i just love that artwork that I believe this picture was taken in the Jefferson Airplane Mansion. So really cool and it sounds really great. Another difficult thing about Goodwill is usually the records you find are in really beat up condition, but this one turned out to be nice, not really scratched up. I cleaned it using a spin clean and it came out really great. This one I have not listened to yet, but it's from Goodwill as well. And I can't resist anything James Bond. This is James Bond, I think this is just selections from a few of his movies, a few of the James Bond movies. 
played by the Danny Davis and his orchestra. Um, it's not even an actual James Bond photo being used there. Um, but I saw it and it looked pretty interesting. So I'd still have to give that one a listen, but cool find for Goodwill. I figure at Goodwill, you're getting these for a dollar or two. Uh, definitely worth taking a listen. Now this one was a really big find for me. And I found this at the same place Bruised Apple in Peekskill, New York. And this is Miles Ahead, Miles Davis. This is an original mono. Um, really awesome that I found it. It was a little beat up and it's a little scratched up, but it plays really great. It's on that Columbia 6i. And this was a really cool album. This one's interesting because it's Miles Davis playing with a big band, which sounds a little strange. And even when you're listening to it, it doesn't quite sound right like you'd expect Miles Davis to sound. Um, but it's a good album nonetheless, and it was really cool to pick it up for such a cheap price. Um, also, what's cool about this is the album artwork. This album artwork was later changed because apparently Miles Davis got very angry that this woman was featured on the cover and not him. He's on the back over there. Later issues of this album actually just featured a photo of Miles on the front. So um, cool that I got an original copy of that. This one I picked up at Bruised Apple Books as well. And this one's not an expensive record or anything. I just, I've been into this song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco lately, Tony Bennett. He passed away pretty recently. And I saw this really cheap at Bruised Apple and figured I'd pick it up. This is a mono copy and it's a really great condition. Usually you find these and they're really beat up. I guess they were very well loved, but um, cool to add that into the collection as well. All right, next up now, as you guys know, if you've been watching my videos um, on a really big Grateful Dead kick lately, so I've been picking up a bunch of Grateful Dead and Grateful Dead related albums, both on CD and vinyl, but we're just gonna talk about the vinyl today. So first up, pick this up on a Whatnot auction. This is Jerry Garcia, uh, Run For The Roses. This is a really cool solo album of his from the 80s. Uh, features covers of I Saw Her Standing There from the Beatles, of course, and Knocking on Heaven's Door, which I know Grateful Dead would cover in their live shows as well. So cool solo album from Jerry Garcia to pick up. Um, I also wanted to pick up Grateful Dead. I also picked up, I should say, Grateful Dead, The Best Of. This is Skeletons from the Closet. This is a really nice compilation of Grateful Dead hits. And I actually, my dad had this on CD, actually he probably still does, had this on CD and he used to play this one in the car. So I wanted to pick up the vinyl version of this, very nostalgic and, you know, like I said, puts together all those songs that you want to hear. Sometimes you don't want to listen to Grateful Dead for just the long jam. Sometimes you want to really just listen to hits, studio recordings, and that's a great compilation for that. Now this one I've been looking for for a while, and I was really excited when I found this for a really fair, nice price, but this is Grateful Dead, Skull and Roses, the live album in very nice condition, except for a little corner cut and a little bit of writing there, but that's okay. Um, with the original inner sleeves, which is really nice too. And, and this is the big one, the original sticker that was included with the album as well. So this is a first press, and obviously with Grateful Dead stuff, early stuff, if it's a first press, it's on that green label. Haven't gotten a chance to listen to this yet, but really excited to. I've been looking for a reasonably priced copy of this for a while because this tends to get up there in price, especially ones in good condition with all the um, inners included. All right, next up. And I'm probably gonna butcher the name of this album, and if you're a Grateful Dead fan, you know what's coming next. But this is Aksumaksoa. I think I got that right. I hope I did. I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments below. Um, but I, I just picked this up yesterday. I went to a flea market up in Stormville, uh, New York, and I saw this for a really nice price. This is um, their third studio album, I believe. 
um, psychedelic sounding. Haven't gotten a chance to listen to it yet, but I'm really excited to. This is not on the green label. It's on the Burbank label. That's probably why I got it for such a nice price, but in really great condition. And I just, I'm trying to get all the Grateful Dead stuff I can right now and not as familiar with their earlier psychedelic stuff. So this will be a really cool listen. All right, next up. And I found this over at Dark Side Records in Poughkeepsie, New York. Amazing store. If you live in New York and you haven't been there, definitely get over there. It is one of the best record stores you'll ever go to. Um, but I saw this, I was looking through the Stray Cat section and I saw this album. This is, Fan this is Phantom Rocker and Slick. Now, obviously we're missing Brian Setzer from this, but we have two members of the Stray Cats and we have Earl Slick. Earl Slick has kind of jumped around in terms of his guitar playing. He's played guitar for David Bowie, the New York Dolls, uh, among many others. Um, and Earl Slick, I actually have one of his signature guitars even. He's a really cool uh, guitar player and I did not even know about this album. I really expected it based on the artwork, based on who's playing on the album, to be very rockabilly, and it's really not. It's really just hard rock, classic rock sounding, a little bit of an 80s tinge. Um, but I, what also caught my eye about this album, and I'm sure you guys can see right there, they look very glammed up, new wave rockabilly. I've never seen these guys glammed up so much, so it just looked a little silly, definitely of the time. Um, but wanted to pick this up and I was listening to this in the record store on my AirPods, uh, just streamed it real quick to see if it was something that I'd want to pick up and it was good. And you know, I've just never seen it before. So I'm, I'm just happy to add it to the collection. I love the Stray Cats. I love Earl Slick. So cool album to add in. Now these next two I found at this random antique store that my wife and I had stumbled across as we were driving back from the flea market. And I've been looking for a reasonably priced copy of this for a while. This is Kiss Destroyer. I don't have this. This is one of the few Kiss albums that I don't have. Um, it's got a little marking there on it. This is not the original pressing, I don't believe, because it's not the Bogart label. It's just the regular Casablanca label. But I needed a copy of this for my collection and this was just such a great price. Usually you find these for about 20 to $30. Uh, has the original inner, which is nice. But if you find Kiss Destroyer for under $10, you, you have to pick it up, especially in this good condition. That being the only blemish here, other than that, it's in stellar condition. But I also found in this store, and this was really surprising to me, and I was very hesitant at first because I saw, you guys will see in a minute, the outer jacket is a little messed up over there. It's a little bent over, but that's really because these are really thin. This is a German issue, German press. It says it's it's made in Holland, but or printed in the Netherlands. So I guess you could say like a Dutch press. I, th I think it might be German just because of the way that Kiss is written. If you know better than me, definitely write in the comments below where you think this is from. But the album jacket is so thin on this one. This is obviously Ace Freely, uh, his solo album, one of the four. Um, this is my favorite of the four solo albums. I have this on CD, did not have it on vinyl, but I saw it there and you can see the label too is a little different than the American labels would be. But I saw this in the store and I had to pick this up. This is just one of those things. And this scared me, but the vinyl turned out to be perfect. So you know what? Um, in that case, you got to pick it up. So another one from that flea market that I went to, this is one of the Grand Funk albums that I don't have. And I, you know, if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that I'm, I've been really into Grand Funk lately too. And this is Grand Funk, their red album, in really nice condition. Usually these are pretty beat up, at least from what I've seen. And this is on the green capital label, really cool stuff. I'm excited to listen to that. And lastly, I'm gonna go through three of these Pablo records that I've been picking up. Now, these have been really popular jazz records in the vinyl community right now. I know that Chad from Acoustic, Acoustic Sounds has been uh, reissuing the Pablo records. So now people wanna pick up the old ones because they're far cheaper and they sound great. Um, but I've been picking them up as well when I see them because they do sound great. They're great jazz records. Uh, from the later days of these artists, but these are top artists. This is Count Basie, Kansas City 3, and this is one of the ones that Chad's actually reissuing. 
but um, you know, you can pick these up really cheap. There's the label, original Pablo. You can pick these up really cheap still. I mean, they were never expensive records, but they're just becoming very popular. They might go up in price because that's usually what happens when the vinyl community gets its hands on things, but we'll see. Uh, this one I picked up on eBay. This is Satch and Josh again. This is uh, Oscar Peterson and Count Basie. So really cool stuff. This one's a gatefold. And just really, really great jazz. There's nothing wrong with these records. And lastly, this one I picked up at a, just a random tag sale that my wife and I stumbled across on the way back from the flea market yesterday. This is Oscar Peterson and Dizzy Gillespie. Great condition. There's that Pablo label again. I love that Pablo Picasso dog on it. All right, guys, so there you have it. Those are my recent pickups, at least some of them, because I know I always forget some as I go to put these back. I see records in my collection that I, you know, forget to mention during these recent finds. So maybe I'll save them, save them for the next time. But um, please let me know in the comments below, what have you picked up recently? Do you have any of these albums that I picked up? If so, what do you think of them? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have that conversation with you. As always, everybody, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to leave a like and comment below this video. Subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications. All that stuff is free, so definitely do it. It's fun, it's free, and it's great for my channel. I'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for watching.